Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you very much for joining us here today. My name is Rich Naren, Executive Vice President of Communications and Broadcasting for the Arizona Coyotes. On behalf of the entire organization, we'd like to welcome all of our fans watching this press conference live at ArizonaCoyotes.com and Fox Sports Go. We'd also like to welcome all of our fans listening in on Arizona Sports 98.7 FM. Uh, we're very appreciative of the fact that our broadcast partners, Fox Sports Arizona and Arizona Sports 98.7 FM, are carrying this live today. So thank you very much. We'll start things off by introducing our head table. To my left is Coyote's chairman, owner, chairman, and governor, Andrew Barraway. Next to Andy is Coyote's president and CEO, Steve Patterson. Next to Steve is Coyote's president of hockey operations and general manager, John Chaika. Next to John is Coyote's head coach, Rick Tockett. And next to Rick is Coyote's chief operating officer and general counsel, Aaron Cohen. We'll start things off today by calling upon Coyote's owner, chairman, and governor, Andrew Barraway. Andy. Thank you, Rich. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for being here. Um, it's a great day in Coyote's history, and today marks a new year for our franchise. As you all know, a few weeks ago, I became sole owner of the hockey club. This is a dream come true for me. It's something I had wanted my, my, entire, my entire life. My family couldn't be any more excited, and we couldn't be any more excited about the bright future of hockey in the Valley. I made the decision to expand my ownership in the Coyotes for a few reasons. First, I love this team, I love hockey, and I, and I, and I love being here in the Valley. I am a uh, homeowner here, I voted here, we're committed to Arizona long term, this is where we want to be. So with a consolidated owner ownership structure, a dynamic new management team comprised of an experienced CEO like Steve Patterson one of the NHL's smartest, certainly youngest, and most dynamic GM in John Chaika, and a proven leader and winner like Rick Tockett as our head coach. Combine that with all the young and great talent that we have on this squad, and the sky is the limit for this franchise. Like Commissioner Bettman and the NHL has said, I believe in this market, I believe in this team, and I believe in our fans. Our primary focus now, and the number one thing I can do, having fixed a lot of the organizational issues at the team. I think we're being very well run right now. Having fixed that, the most important thing is to find a long-term home for the Coyotes in Arizona. Again, repeat, we couldn't be any more committed to Arizona and the Valley, and the biggest project in hand is to find a home in the right place for the Coyotes in Arizona. We've had to make some difficult moves, decisions over the last few weeks, but I'm confident the decisions we made were the right ones and were necessary to take this franchise to the next level. It was critically important to find a right CEO to guide us, especially to guide us on this you know, new stadium project. So I'm so excited to introduce our new president and CEO, Steve Patterson. Steve has a wealth of experience and served as innovative and successful executive in the NFL, NBA, professional hockey, professional baseball, and college athletics for over 30 years. He's built championship teams and organizations and has managed stadiums, ballparks, arenas all across the United States. Most importantly, he previously worked in our market and has the necessary corporate and political relationships to help us secure a long-term home for the Coyotes in the Valley. We're thrilled to have him join us. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Patterson. Thank you, Andy, uh, for the kind introduction and, and for bringing my wife, who's with me over here, Yasmin, and I back here to, uh, to the Valley of the Sun. You know, we really enjoyed uh, living here and working here in the past. Uh, we kept our home here, uh, and so we're really happy and grateful to be, uh, to be back amongst our many friends uh, here in the Valley. I also want to thank all of you and the media for your coverage and support as we go forward on this journey. But uh, as Andy said, this is a, an exciting day. I'm excited to be here. It's a new day that's dawning for the Arizona Coyotes franchise, and 
I look at Andy's consolidation of the ownership as a, a real plus. It allows us to align behind a singular strategy uh, and a vision to build a solid franchise both on and off the ice with a young up and coming team that provides a great in-game experience for all our fans night in and night out. We got a dynamic new team of executives in the front office and, and uh, folks on the ice with our new ownership structure, a new CEO or a new COO in Aaron, a new president of hockey operations, and a new head coach who you hear from in a minute, along with many great new you know, young players on the ice that you'll, fans will have a chance to root for uh, night in and night out. And I really you know, hope that the moves today in the last few weeks demonstrate Andy's vision and where we're trying to head with this franchise to create stability and success uh, on a long-term basis for hockey here in the Valley. We and everybody associated here with this franchise are committed to a great long-term future in this valley. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have come back here if that wasn't Andy's vision and what we were trying to uh, create here in this community in the valley as a whole. And so that's why all of us are here today. And lastly, I just want to say to all the fans, uh, I want to thank you for your passionate commitment to the franchise for so many years. I know there's been a lot of ups and downs over the 21 years of the, of the franchise here in the valley at a couple of different venues. and. Uh, I know at times it's been tough to be, to be a Coyotes fan, quite frankly. Uh, so although there's a lot of work to do uh, on a go-forth basis, I know hockey's going to be a long-term success here in, in the Valley of the Sun. Um, we've had one great generation of kids grow up and become uh, uh, hockey fans here in the Valley. We've had one of those kids grow up and be the number one pick in the NHL, something that was unthinkable 20, 25 years ago uh, when I first started coming to the Valley. Uh, when I was in the IHL, Lyle Abraham had his team playing over in the old building uh, for a lot of years. You know, so I'm sure we're going to have a second and a third and a fourth and many generations after that to come of uh, kids that grew up loving hockey, learning about hockey, and supporting hockey. And again, we couldn't have done that without all the support of the fans that we've had for so many years. So I look forward to growing the game of hockey here uh, in the Valley, enjoying being back here, working with our corporate partners, our, our season ticket members, you and the media, and uh, the elected and appointed officials in this community. And uh, so I want to thank you all again in advance for your support and uh, look forward to working with you for many years to come. Thanks. John. Thanks, Steve. At this time, we'll call upon Cody's President of Hockey Operations and General Manager John Chaika to introduce Rick Tockett. John? Thank you, Rich. Uh, <laughs> thank you, everybody, for uh, coming out today uh, during your busy schedule. Uh, feeling with a bit of a cold, so I'll keep my comments brief. But uh, it's my distinct pleasure to introduce Rick, Co uh, Rick Tockett as our next head coach of the Arizona Coyotes. I want to start off by thanking Mario Lemieux, Jim Rutherford, and the Pittsburgh Penguins for allowing us the opportunity to talk to Rick. Uh, we're extremely fortunate he was uh, available at this time of the year, probably due to his uh, long playoff run. Uh, Pittsburgh's a team that has great, talented players, but to win back-to-back -back cups, you have to have a, a great environment. And uh, you know them allowing their, their people to pursue opportunities like this, I think it speaks volumes. So thank you again. Uh, you know, Rick came in and he, he was the best candidate by a wide margin. He, he walks in, he's a leader, he's a proven leader, he's got presence, he's got a great personality, he's a great person. Uh, so right, right from the get-go it was clear, you know, he was probably our leading candidate. He came in with a real vision of how we want to play, how we want to play fast uh, with, our, with our young players. We want to play aggressive, we want to play with the puck. Uh, he had very concrete examples of how he was going to do that. but. Um, you know, that's from the strategy side of things. On, on the relational side of things, you know, Rick checked a lot of the boxes. Uh, he's a communicator. Uh, he's a developer. He's a teacher. He's, he's also a guy that he's going to push. He's going to challenge. Uh, we got a lot of good players right now, a lot of players that are bordering on being great. They, they want to be pushed. They want to take that next step in their careers. Uh, Rick's a guy. He, he's a nice guy, uh, but, but he also is going to push. And, uh, it being a nice guy it wears off after a while. These players, they want to get better, and they want to pursue better things in their careers. Uh, Rick's going to be the guy that helps them get there. Uh, like I said, he's coming off back-to-back -back Stanley Cup wins, uh, won a Stanley Cup as a player. Uh, I think he's played over about 49 games uh, in the last two years, uh, playoff games. He's been coached. Uh, I think those experiences, they transform you as a person, uh, as a coach. You learn a lot. You're forced to adjust and adapt. That was very clear throughout the interview process. So. I'm going to finish off by uh, thanking Andy Barraway. Uh, he helped through the coaching process, uh, but mainly when it was clear that Rick was the candidate, 
uh, the, the, the prime candidate. He stepped up and made sure that we got the best guy for the job. Uh, so thank you, Andy. And without further ado, I'd like to uh, introduce Rick Tockett. Thanks, guys. Um, I'm going to do a little Academy Award, like thanking a lot of people. But I, I, I want to—I do want to thank the Pittsburgh Penguins. I, I had a, a, a great run there. Uh, Mary Lemieux, uh, you know, giving me a chance to coach again. He's a—he's a great human being. I really uh, owe him a lot. Ron Burkle, great owner, uh, and um, Mike Sullivan and uh, Jim Rutherford, it's, and the players. Uh, it's a super group, and I'm—I'm uh, I'm thankful for the opportunity they gave me and the th and um, the opportunity to come here in the, in the Valley, which I'm. Uh, I've been here before, and I know what uh, the fan base and how crazy they can get with w when you win uh, games here, and, and give them an exciting brand of hockey. Um, I, I, I'm a loyal guy, um, and I, I, I really appreciate the commitment that Andrew and, uh, and John gave me. I just met Steve the other day, smart guy, and Aaron. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity. Uh, these guys have committed to me, you know, to give me a four-year deal. That's a, a commitment to them, and I, 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 I'm going to roll up the sleeves and go to work here with these young guys. It's funny. I was just before I came here. Uh, Brendan Perlini's in the dressing room taping a stick, and I went up to him and I said, "What are you doing? At training camp's not till it was another 80 days, so like, uh, uh, or the, the drop of October." Um, but that's the excitement I like. Those young kids, you know, he's taping a stick. He's here. It's like you know, two months away. That's the sort of stuff that I like about these young guys because they're sponges. And it, uh, I've learned from my experience from, from coaching to Sidney Crosby or, or, or hanging out with Wayne Gretzky and Merrill Lemieux and asking their opinions on certain uh, things about leadership, you know, how to play the game. Um, and I like the brand of style that we played last couple of years, last few years in pitch, which is a fast pace. So we look at our roster, we have some young guys, you know, there's going to be some bumps around, along the way. But I want these guys to be creative, and I want these guys to play free. And I think that's important here. Um, and, um, you know, I, I think the fans, if you can support these kids, I think it's going to really, uh, the, process of, the process of it is going, to be a, is going to be a good process. And, you know, hopefully one day we can uh, lift the Stanley Cup because it's, there's no better feeling, trust me, it's uh, the best feeling in the world. I'm, I'm better with asking questions, so I'm going to sit down. But I want to appreciate, appreciate, uh, appreciate everybody for coming today, and I'm very excited about this new era. Appreciate it. Thanks, Talk. Thanks, Steve. It's great to have you both aboard. Uh, this time, we'll open the floor for questions from the media. We have two wireless mics in the crowd, so if you have a question, please raise your hand, and Jeffrey or Greg will hand you a microphone. Uh, we'll start with uh, Sarah McCollin from the Arizona Republic. <coughs> Sarah, go ahead. Andrew, was there, a, was there something about the previous ownership structure that wasn't working that made you want to pursue complete control with your buyout? Um, I wouldn't say it like, wasn't working. It was just a lot of voices. We had 10 different limited partners, and with anyone who's been in business with 10 partners, there's going to be some different opinions sometime. But um, it was always my dream to, to own the entire thing, and you know, that's why I doubled down on my, on my investment at this point. So n no major disagreements, but just it's hard to get 10 guys to agree on anything. Next question. Hey, Rick, welcome back to town. Notice Thank the... You. Kachina uh, jersey yeah. up there and, and, and uh, looking back on your time here and you mentioned how you think hockey works in the desert and Phoenix is a good sports town. Why do you think it works so well when you were a player here and what do you have to do to, to kind of rekindle the, the passion in the fan base? Well, I, I just remember the time here, obviously the, uh, we had a good, you know, we had a good hockey club. We won, you know, we, we were a very competitive hockey team. You know, we had uh, we played it, we played a fast doll. I, I like the, 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 the way we played. I think that's what uh, this fan base wants. They want an exciting offense. They want to see some offense. They want to see some skill. Um, and we had some, we had those type of players back then. Um, and uh, you know, America West at the time we were playing there, it was uh, it was it was it was a, a, a it was a venue. It was a it was a really good venue in the sense that the fans loved it. It was downtown. It was just it was an exciting it was just an exciting time when I was here. So. Um, you know, I, I hope we can rekindle that, obviously, with that kind of style of play and those type of personalities. Richard? Uh, coach over here, Richard yeah. Science, Fox 10. You know, kind of piggybacking off that uh, yeah. question and that comment, does, does it mean more coming back 
you know, because of your history with this uh, franchise? And, and, you know, is that one of the reasons why you left in a pretty good situation to come here? Yeah, I mean, if you, if you, if the reason I took this job and, and, and talking to Andrew and John, I mean, they, you know, it's commitment. It's a new start. It's a, you know, they want to create a, uh, a freshness around here. This is a hockey market. It really is. It's an underrated hockey mar market. I, I think my job can be a premier job, you know, coaching job. It will be. It, you know, it's a, I mean, I'm excited to take this job and because I, I feel, I, I used to live in the Valley, you know, and, I, and I, there's a lot of old friends that I've seen and, uh, you know, they're just starving for, you know, a winner here. So um, you, you mix that, the, all that stuff in, in uh, together. It's, uh, it was an easy choice for me to come back with a commitment from Andrew's group, uh, from Andrew and, and John. Brad Sussman. Steve Brad Sussmat, Sports 360AZ, welcome back. Uh, if you could address the building situation in your view of getting a facility done. You have a terrific background in a lot of different sports. You know this market, you know the people over at Arizona State as well as, as around town. Getting a building facility done for the fans and the team. Well, I've done a lot of those projects around a lot of different markets in the, in the country. and. Uh, I think for us on a go forth basis, we're going to want to talk to everybody uh, in, in the Valley uh, without any necessarily predisposition as to where we would ultimately uh, play. You know, as I've said before, these deals are like vampire movies, right? The, you know, it's got to go in the grave half a dozen times and come back out, hopefully seven times. And uh, uh, I can remember when. You know, we got looked like we got turned down in Houston for uh, for the NFL, and sure enough. Uh, they gave Los Angeles six months to try to put it together, and I can remember flying back on the plane with Bob McNair, and he looked across from me and said, you know what, Steve? They haven't been able to figure it out for 30 years. Six months ain't going to do it for them, right? And so about five and a half months later, we were back in Paul Tagliabue's office uh, putting a deal together. You know, so whether it's a big market like that or a small market like Tacoma where we did the ballpark up there or, or elsewhere uh, with arenas and, and uh, stadia, I, I think this is a tremendous market. There's great corporate support here. It's a good hockey market. You've had fans that have stuck with this franchise for more than 20 years. So there's a lot of the tools that you need, provided we can find a, a deal that works for all parties involved to make a great fan experience night after night and to provide the resources so John and Doc can go out and put a great team on the ice night after night and and create a lot of excitement for everybody. Next question. Oh, yeah, uh, Greg Moore, Arizona Republic. Uh, welcome back. Welcome back. Please <laughs> <Lisa> meet you. <laughs> <laughs> An honor and a privilege. <laughs> um, uh, Andrew, could you talk about what impressed you uh, about both Mr. Patterson and uh, your new coach, please, Mr. Tockett? Sure. Who would you like me to start with? <laughs> uh, whoever's sitting closest. OK, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> Uh, well, with, with Steve, it was his, you know, his intelligence, uh, his wealth of knowledge. Um, he's also an ex-lawyer like me. No one's happier than an ex-lawyer, so I, I relate to those guys. Um, he, just, he had the skill set. He's, he's done it before, um, and what we're asking him to do is, is a really big job. It's certainly not easy, and uh, he has the experience, the intelligence, and the contacts, and the commitment to the Valley to do it. So a combination of all those things, we thought he was the clear choice. Um, with Tak, he was, you know, in my mind, he was a Philly guy like me. Uh, scrapper, tough, <laughs> Philly people have attitudes. You know, we always feel like, you know, we can't live up to New York. So we have, we have a natural chip on our shoulder. So I related to Tak there. And uh, I, I watched him play growing up. I, I watched his, you know, I watched him score goals. I watched him beat people up on the ice. I liked his intensity. And, um, He's beloved, um, both in all the communities where he's played and by his players. Um, they all want to play for Tak. And so when you're talking about building a long-term winning culture here in Arizona, a big reason people are going to want to play is who the coach is. And players love, love playing for Rick. And do you, think, uh, do you think Coach will help to sort of ease the fans' feelings? You know, folks were upset about what happened to Shane Doan. I'm curious whether you think that he'll be able to ease some of that. Well, what happened with Shane, I would have to take some responsibility for. I mean, Shane is a bedrock of this community and a pillar in the valley for, you know, for since, since we came here. Um, and uh, I think we made the right hockey decision with Shane. I'm confident we did. But I certainly, I, in retrospect, I should have flown out and met with him myself and told him that. And for that, I'm sorry. I apologize to Shane and the fans. I definitely could have done that better. Um, with that said, it's time to move forward. And I think... 
we're trying to build a you know a winning team not a situation where you know we put out some players that some of the fans might like and we're not going to be competitive anyway so who cares i mean we're here to to win now and i think you can see by some of our off-season you know moves that we're going to build a franchise a team that can compete and compete in the in the near term next question who has the mic oh go ahead jerry uh for rick rick uh both john and and uh, andy talked about your presentation and how they were blown away by how, how deep you went into what you what you talked about without getting too deep for for us can you talk a little bit about this roster very young very talented roster kind of a dearth of of, of veteran leadership but uh what is it your style the way you want to play and how does that fit in with the with the with the people that are both here and the people that are coming in the next year or two um good seeing you again sherry i haven't seen you in a long time but uh you, you know i I think the, the situation for me, um, and I learned a lot over the last years, obviously coaching from my days in Tampa till now. Um, when you look at this roster, you know a lot of these guys were you know stars and junior, and they were very creative guys. Um, I don't want to take the stick out of their hand. I want them to be creative. Um, I want them to play fast. You know, I want them to, to not think too much. You know, um, that's what I'm gonna preach to them. That's why it was attractive to me. You know, if you look at other organizations like Chicago, they went through some pitfalls. You know, that young group. All of a sudden, they win three cups. You look at Pittsburgh; you know they went through some tough times, and all of a sudden, you know they have a young core. You know, obviously, they're they're thirty-year-old guys winning cups. Um, that's what attracted me to this job because you have that young core of guys, and if we can just keep building with these kids, maybe add some players as we go along. Um, it's their room, you know. They're going to own it, and um, that's the stuff I'm going to preach to them. So that's the exciting part, and that's why I took the job, um, having an opportunity to groom these young kids. I think we're going back to Sarah McCall. John, how do your responsibilities change now that you've added the title of president of hockey operations? Yeah, yeah, not a whole lot overall. I'd say uh, I think it was more of a sign of alignment from from Andy on down, and uh, just that there's a singular voice from top to bottom. And uh, yeah, I think that's that's the main thing overall. Rick, over here, Mark Brown. Hi, Rick. I'm Mark. Uh, welcome back to the Valley. Thank just you. Just to follow up on Jerry's question a little bit. Um, the previous coach had a particular style and a particular structure, and you have your style. Um, let me ask you this. What's been your experience with younger players transitioning to a new coach? Well, we, we had some young uh, uh, players come into Pittsburgh, and, um, and that was probably my, one of my jobs to work with them. Um, they're going to make mistakes, and you can't, you know, they're, they're going to they're get knocked down. And you you got to pick them back up and get them back out there, you know. Um, you know, you spend a lot of time with them, and you know, obviously watching video and a practice. But um, the biggest thing for me uh, is, is trying to take the anxiety out of their game because they, they are going to make some mistakes. And um, you know, I'm not going to beat them down. Like, like I believe in a positive atmosphere. Um, I believe in you know, my door is always open. I know coaches always say that, but my door is always open. Um, I was the luxury of having some players on pitch with them. I mean, they. They call, I was telling John, they'd call me at 9 o'clock at night, and they go, hey, do you see that face-off play that San Jose did the other night? And I'm like, man, it's 9 o'clock at night, man. Like, <laughs> you know, let's wait till tomorrow. I, I don't mind that. I like that creativity of that stuff, and that's what I want to breed, that sort of thinking. You know, if they have some ideas, come in my room with the coaching staff and all that stuff. Um, so hopefully I'll answer your question. Uh, Next question. I'm Matt Lehman with Arizona Sports. This question is from Mr. Bearway. I was just wondering, uh, you said it was one of your dreams to own the franchise and to be, be the sole owner of this team. Um, just sort of going forward, how do you see your, uh, I guess, your face on the franchise? Like, how, what do you think is going to be your role in the public setting, and, and how would you characterize what you want to be for this team? Sure. Um, I, I want to be here. I love being here. I, I live here now. I want to be between periods giving out bobbleheads to the kids. I love doing that. Um, I, I, I enjoy all of this. So I'm here to be a resource. Um, I think, you know, generally you, you hire the best people and you let them do their thing. And I think that we've done that. Um, I think we have the right people in place to get everything done from putting a winning team on the ice to getting a, a stadium that, that's going to make everyone proud. Um, so I'm going to be part of the collaborative process, but I'm, I'm definitely I'm going to be here. You'll see a lot of me. <laughs> Back to Greg. Sure. Andrew, you mentioned keeping the team here, but you said here in Arizona. Are yep. you guys exploring Tucson as an option? We're exploring um, 
<laughs> well, we have a, we have the road runners there. Um, so I would say Tucson, uh, no, no on Tucson, but we're, we're open to anything in, in, in the Valley and particularly in the, in the East Valley. Well, we're we're not going to cannibalize our own AHL team. <laughs> Michael Bauer. Mr. Barraway, Mike Bauer, 1580 AM, 993 FM. Steve, Rick, welcome back to the Valley. You mentioned that you brought these guys back to the Valley in a couple different ways. In the future, is there an opportunity to bring a guy like Shane Doan back to the organization? And also, you mentioned you regret you didn't fly out and meet with Shane. Have you spoken with him since? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, I spoke with Jane, uh, Shane shortly uh, thereafter. Um, and um, we're waiting. Shane still hasn't made a decision on what he wants to do, whether he's going to go play for another team. And, and we need to respect his decision-making process. So I don't want to speak for him, but... I can say that I take personal responsibility and I, I stand by the decision, but I personally didn't handle it well, and I'm, I'm sorry for that. Yeah, go ahead, Jerry. Uh, for Andy and, and Steve, and Steve, totally understand you've only been on the job for 72 hours. <laughs> but uh, Andy, given, given your commitment to the Valley and the fact that you have a short-term lease here, are you, uh, has the timeline kind of stretched out a little bit as far as having to get into a new place? Uh, you, you, there's a lot of work to be done. Steve says these jobs, you know, wax and wane. Uh, will you look at more, to, uh, maybe extending the lease here so that you can so you can get the job done long term with a with a new arena? Well, I don't want to get into hypotheticals about the extending a lease or not, but I will say this: there's no definite timeline. I can tell you that failure's not an option. We're gonna get a new stadium here. It's just a question of when and. We're, we're going to make it happen. I think we put the people in place um, to get it done. I can tell you we're, look, we're, we are aggressively pursuing all options, and uh, we have to make it work. We, we, we don't have a choice. So if it takes a little bit more time, that's okay? It, there, yeah, failure's not an option. It has to get done. Well, by the way, I'd like it done quicker rather than, <laughs> than, than later, but we have to get it done. Where's the mic, sir? Back to you. Andrew, you said you have been part of the collaborative process. How involved then have you been in the decision-making process, specifically this summer, with the roster turnover and the personnel changes? Uh, I've been very involved, Sarah. Is that your style moving forward, or, or do you see yourself taking a step back or remaining very hands-on in the hockey decisions? Well, uh, the hands – I mean, I, I think we have the best, you know – GM in the league. I'm, I'm thrilled to have John, and he's got a new title now. Thankfully, no raise in pay, but a good <laughs> new title. Um, <laughs> I think that he's awesome, and I, I respect everything that he's doing, and, and, and we talk, and we talk a lot, and sometimes I have some ideas that John may or may not like, but ultimately, I'm going I'm to respect his, his decision making, but I, I am going to be involved. And it's much simpler now when it's he's got one owner to deal with instead of a bunch of different voices. So we've been able to make decisions on a more streamlined basis and I think we've got more done this off season than we've had in I don't know how many years but we're getting stuff done Go ahead, Greg. sure this one from Mr. Patterson do you feel like you left uh, ASU maybe with a little bit of unfinished business right you left ASU you went to Texas you came back is this a chance for you to do something for the Valley that you set out to do before didn't quite get done because circumstances changed well, I tell you, we, I had a, a great time working with Michael Crow at, at Arizona State and, and uh, Morgan Olson and uh, Rocky Harris and a number of the other folks that are still there. <clears throat> I think we made a lot of progress in a very short period of time. So whether that was uh, getting the Papago golf course deal done, getting the uh, Phoenix Muni ballpark deal done, getting started on the football renovations, uh, you know, dramatically increasing our endowment, uh, growing the budget, uh, putting a ticket sales and data analytics uh, uh, situation in place for them to generate more revenue. Uh, would it have been great to be able to continue that path? Sure, I would have enjoyed it. Um, I think here's a, another opportunity um, to do what I really enjoy, which is you know, creating great venues, creating great fan experiences that can help the community really come together and, and have a great time whether it's uh, seeing a music act, whether it's seeing a hockey game, whether it's uh, watching your high school graduation or you know, bringing great events like uh, uh, a Frozen Four or a Final Four or a Super Bowl, which I've done in other cities. Um, all those, I think, are what uh, make cities great. Um, without those kind of amenities, 
what do you really have and what do you really have as a basis of uh, gathering the community together and so that's what I enjoy doing I think we got a great opportunity to do it here as I said it's a new day dawning we got a great team to be able to put this together Andy's shown tremendous commitment to this process and we're going to be successful next question Any, I'll go ahead Greg yeah, sure. coach I was really impressed by a video. I read that you had a video presentation that was really specific, right? And I'm also impressed that you moved past the gambling scandal, right? That you seem to have just completely, that's in the past. Nobody even brings it up anymore. I'm curious what you said to Andy that gave him the confidence that you make good decisions and that you've moved beyond that and it's not anything to worry about. Well, I, I don't really got into it. I mean, I just just been, uh, was myself. You know, we had a couple of great dinners and we just kind of talked about you know, a little bit of life and hockey, and, um, you know, I'm a hockey guy, you know, um, I, I speak that lingo, um, you know, John's a, John's a, a smart guy, and we, we talked about systems and stuff that I like, um, you know, how to, you know, I'm not going to bore you about D zone and neutral zone offense, all that stuff, and how to handle young kids, how to ha handle veteran players, um, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot to it, you know. Uh, you know, do you fly back after game this time? That there's just a lot of different things, and I have a philosophy, and we we go over that stuff, and that's part of the interview because you know you're, they want to make sure that yeah that uh, it coincides what they th they think too. So um, no, it was just great. I, I actually enjoyed the process. It was great. Uh, uh, it was with Steve Sullen and John, and, and then Andrew later. It was a uh, uh, you know just went over kind of watching some of film and then talked about just sort of day to day stuff. So it, it was actually an enjoyable uh, process. It really was. Andrew, you, so you didn't ask him a whole lot about it. What due diligence had you done to let you know that this wasn't something you needed to spend a lot of time on? Yeah, I, I can address that because I, I did most of the due diligence. I mean, you, you talk to people. And, uh, you know, I think you, you are what your, your background is, your resume, you know. And, uh, look, Rick's got a long, long history of being a man of character and integrity. Uh, I think across the NHL, he's one of the most respected people in the league. So. Um, you know, things happen, people make mistakes, call them, uh, and, and you move on. And I've, quite frankly, I think a lot of the things that R Rick has gone through, whether it was his experience in Tampa uh, as a head coach, which had its ups and downs, I think that's what makes you a person. So I thought, you know, a lot of the things that Rick's gone through are, are real positives and things that he can communicate with our players. And, you know, just everyone goes through things, and, and that's how you come through them that, that, that matters. So. Uh, a video presentation? Uh, <laughs> no. Could you tell me a little bit more about that? That that was really impressive that you showed up with a specific plan for what you've seen in other places and what you would do here. I, geek out with me for a minute. I'd love to hear some of that stuff. <laughs> about the well, it's it's really just a break. Like, you know, there's so many different ways you can play the game and systems, and uh, you know, there's a lot of other teams that play other ways that are successful. So, I just like the way you know we, you know, the, the way I like to play, you know, and basically just broke down the game, you know, broke some film down with John and, and uh, Sully, uh, Steve Sullivan, and just talked about certain, you know, certain things. I mean, I, mean, I could sit there, we, I mean, we spent three hours talking about, you know, certain things. You know, hey, does it deactivate here? What do you think here? Does the, does the winger hold this position on this? You know, power play, which are, you know, your, your uh, feeling philosophy on power play or penalty kill. You know, how do you handle goalie situation? So, I mean, there's a lot of questions and, you know, and there's a lot of different answers, you know, and, uh, um, I'm always learning too. You know, I picked off some good stuff from them. They, you know, uh, so it's a, uh, you know, I'm not naive to know that I know everything. So uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a sponge too, and I ask a lot of questions. But the one thing I do know is that I, I do believe that to today's game, you got to play a fast style. Um, you know, you got to be able to to activate people. Your third guy's got to be able to get get in. The, I call it in the pile. Go get the puck. You know, the odd time there's going to be a three three on two against, and you can't worry about that. You know, we'll deal with that. Um, so I just want, and I think the fans like that kind of hockey around the league. Is that exciting? You know, uh, you know, you know. I, I'm not saying I want ten nothing game, or ten ten games, but um, you, you want you want a, you want a brand of hockey that's exciting. You have to. It's it's entertainment too, right? So, thank you. Any more questions? Oh, yeah, go ahead. I think it's really too early to speculate on any particular event, but as I said earlier, you know we're willing to talk to anybody in in the uh, valley to make sure that we have a successful 
uh, arena solution that provides stability for the franchises and the resources to, to support the hockey operation. Michael? Hey, John, uh, you know, with the front office in place around you, above you, and all, and all of that, what's the next order of business now? Do you assemble a coaching staff? And if so, are some of the guys that you interviewed for Rick's job potential options? Where do you go from here? Yeah, yeah, I think, well, you know, first and foremost, my job is to uh, put a team on the ice. So, look, I think we're, uh, we're confident in some of the moves we've made thus far. I think we still have a long way to go. Uh, we still have some ground to cover. And, you know, you hope you cover it in the next couple months here. But, you know, again, this is a long-term vision. Uh, we're trying to put holes that are – their plug holes that sustainably that make sense uh, both now and in the future. So uh, we'll go about doing that. You know, Rick's going to spearhead looking for assistant coaches that, that – surround him with the types of people uh, that he's looking for and needs. And uh, he's trying to create a, a similar staff that he had in Pittsburgh and the kind of culture that they had there. So I'll, I'll work with him on some of that. But uh, for the main, most part, he's going to be spearheading it. So I think it's, it's critically important. I think you know having the right staff in place will really help Rick and support him. And uh, you know we can continue to grow in other areas and hockey offs. And, uh, again, it's it's a process where uh, we've done some good things. We've, we've covered some ground, but we've got a vision of where we want to be. And uh, we want to continue to get better and create a, 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 a team that just continues to turn it over year after year, sustainable uh, winning environment. And uh, and it takes some time and some patience, but uh, you know that's where we're headed. Mr. Patterson, anything you want to say about the criticism that came your way from, I don't know, previous stops, maybe Texas, maybe Portland, whatever? <laughs> No, I'm, I'm, look, I'm focused on going forward. Uh, I'm an easy guy to work with if you like to work hard and do your job. And I think we've got a, a great staff here that uh, we're ready to move forward with. And uh, I think we're going to have a good young team on the ice, a good young team in the front office, and I think we're going to have a lot of fun. Are you satisfied with the team you have in place, or do you foresee a lot of changes? I don't foresee a lot of changes. We've got a few positions yet to fill over the course of the summer. Uh, but... Uh, you know, I've known a number of the folks, Greg Olson, the CFO, and I worked together for a long time in Portland and, and got the ship righted there. Um, and so I'm looking forward to working with the folks that are here. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, this question is uh, largely for Andy and, and John. Um, what kind of challenges did you face, or, or maybe just more generally, was it difficult to go through the time that you did without a head coach, particularly because of the timing of the draft and free agency and things like that? What was that process like, just not having a – Boss. Yeah, I can address that. Uh, it, it, it's difficult, um, but but at the same time, like I said, I think we're extremely fortunate that uh, Rick's won back-to-back uh, -back Stanley Cups as an assistant coach. So uh, typically, teams don't like granting permission, or out of respect, you allow the playoffs to kind of play out. And uh, you know, I think that's that that was our advantage in a lot of ways. So uh, extremely fortunate, uh, lucky, call it that uh, a candidate of Rick's caliber was uh, was there and. I thought we moved expeditiously, but uh, also we were very thorough. Uh, talked to pretty much everyone available out there, whether they won Stanley Cups and had a ton of experience as a head coach, to some junior coaches and everything in between. And uh, like I said, it's uh, he, he, Rick's got a unique background uh, as a player, uh, both, you know, and a coach for the Coyotes uh, on both sides of that. He's won Cups on both sides of that. Um, you know, he checks a lot of the boxes. And not not only that, but. Yeah, I'm a firm believer that, that the coach has to match the team. And uh, you know, our personnel is what it is in terms of what we're doing with our young core here. And uh, you know, they have to play a certain way. That's, that's why they were drafted. And uh, you know, there's an alignment there between Rick's vision, how he wants to play, and, and our young players, and how you know, the skill sets and things they need to do to have success. So you know, hopefully it's a perfect storm. And, and I'm, I'm confident it is that we'll have a lot of success with Rick as our head coach for a long time. Uh, additionally, what's the plan going forward just in terms of where you see yourself uh, as, with regard to the salary cap? Because obviously right now, I believe you're just a little bit below it with still a couple RFAs to sign. Do you know this year and then also just going forward in future years where you guys want to be with relation to the cap? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, again, it's something where we're taking a long-term vision on things. So uh, at this point, you know, where we're at, again, we've got a lot of young players that are on their entry-level contract. So you know, a lot of players that are making – Nine hundred thousand dollars. That uh, you know, in the free market, they're probably making significantly more. They're making a multiple of that pretty easily. So, uh, you know, you got to maintain flexibility because you look at the Connor McDavid's and going in their second contract, all of a sudden, yeah, they can jump up over twelve million dollars. So, 
you know, I'm not sure if we have one of those necessarily. Hopefully we do, and we'll deal with that as it comes. But there's going to be players that, that over the next two, three years, uh, we, 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 we believe and project will be um, you know, high-end players, impact players, and those players get paid. So uh, it's something where in the short term we've got to spend to be competitive. Uh, I think the step on and Charleston type of acquisitions show that and, and show that support that we need for our young players. But you got to maintain long-term flexibility in order to you know, plan for these types of things. So uh, I'm confident we have the resources necessary here to have success. And you know, budget's not an excuse. And uh, for, for Steve and Andy, um, has there been a discussion with the league at all with regard to assisting and getting an arena done? And do you plan that, that would be the case going forward? Just the, the league is very much supportive, and the league, is, as uh, Commissioner Bettman has demonstrated, so much commitment to this market. I mean, he loves, we, he spends more time on the Arizona Coyotes than I think than all the other teams. So <laughs> he loves this market. We're going to make it work here. He has been a tremendous, tremendous friend to both me personally and to this market. And I think his, his, his great work goes, you know, mostly, you know, uh, it, it He's not getting the acknowledgement he deserves for keeping hockey here in the desert and insisting that it's going to be here long term. So um, the commissioner of the league is very, very committed to, uh, to Arizona and, is, his, and has helped us in numerous ways. They've been, they've been a big asset to us. And they're anxious for us to get a long-term stadium solution here.